Today I am going to give you a lecture on commutation group. Uh, let us start with, first of all, we start with transformation. Uh, any mapping from a set onto itself is a transformation of the set. Suppose F is any mapping which went from X to X and provided your X must be a finite set. F is a transformation of set X. Now we come to the definition of permutation. Uh, let X be any non empty finite set. A uh, 1 1 onto map which is from X to X is called a permutation. Uh, for example, if we consider a set X having three elements 1, 2, 3, and this F is any mapping which is made from X to X. If this map F is 1, 1 and on 2, 1, 1 means uh, this 1, 1 mapping is sometimes known as injective mappings. Injective means each distinct element of set domain set X must associate with the distinct element of brain set. And on 2 means a subjective mapping, and subjective mapping means no element of the range set uh, left ideal means every element of uh, range set must possess a pre image in the set in the domain set. Now, into the degree of permutation, let a permutation act defined on a finite set X and then the number of elements in this finite set gives the degree of our permutation. For example, in our set X, we have three elements. This implies this uh, the degree of uh, permutation f in this case is 3. If we consider a set x having a n number of elements and provided each element is distinct element, then the degree of permutation f is equal to n. Now, symbol for a permutation, let x consist of n distinct element a1, a2 up to an such that no a i is equal, not equal to a j for any i is not equal to j. Then x contains n distinct element and let f be a permutation of x such that f of a i gives us b i for i vary from 1 to n. i is equal to greater than 1 and less than or equal to n. And, and the elements b1, b2, b3 up to bn are nothing but just a rearrangement of elements of x. We shall use a special symbol to denote a permutation which is uh, f is equal to See, here we arrange the elements in the two rows. The first row is usually known as a domain elements and the second row elements are usually known as uh, image set elements. So, a permutation can be written in a several way. The interchange of column will not change the nature of permutation because if we interchange two columns, it does not affect the range set, range elements. It's corresponding to A1, we have F of A1, for A2 we have B2 and for A3 we have f of A3 and so on. For every element we have an image element in the second group. Now let us take an example like the permutation f and g on four symbols 1, 2, 3, 4. It is given by f where 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 1, 4 goes to 2 and another permutation is g where 1 goes to 4, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 2 and 4 goes to 3. Then f of 1 is obviously f of 1 is 3 and f of 2 is equal to 4, f of 3 is 1 and f of 4 is 2. And similarly for g of 1 we have 4, g of 2 is 1, g of 3 is 2 and g of 4 is 3. So these are the two, uh, two permutations which define on a finite set x which consists of 4 elements. Now equality of two, perm per two permutations, when we say two permutations are identical, Whenever their image sets are identical, means if f is equal to g, two permutations are equal or same, if and only if their image sets are identical for every element x which belongs to our set, finite set x. Like this is an example of two equal permutation, that the permutation f and g are defined on a set x having a four elements, which is given by f equal to this and g equal to this. Evidently, we observe from here that f of 1 is 2, and f of 2 4, f of 3 3, and f of 4 1. Again, 
g of 2 is 4, g of 1 is 2, g of 4 is 1, and g of 3 is 3. From above, we compute that the f of 1 gives us 2. At the same time, this g of 1 also produces 2, means both are same. Similarly, f of 2 gives us 4, and g of 2 is again produced 4. So, in this manner, we observe from here that all the image sets are identical for every x member which belongs to capital X. So, two permutations are identical whenever the image sets are same. Now, total number of distinct permutations means how many permutations we can define over any given finite set. Suppose, let us consider your set consists of n distinct element. Then the total number of permutations which we define over a set x will be n factorial. Because n factorial, in, uh, the, the element of x can be permuted in n factorial distinct ways. Means uh, n factorial distinct element of the elements belongs to x are possible. And if Sn be the set consisting of all permutations of degree n, then the set Sn will have n factorial distinct permutation of degree n. And this set Sn is usually known as a symmetric set. And this Sn contains element like f, where each member of Sn is itself in permutation of degree n. The set S3 of all the permutations of degree 3 will contain 3 factorial is equal to 6 permutations given as follows like f1. Suppose we consider a set X having a three elements, one, two, and three. This first permutation which we define, that is F1 from X to X, one may down one, so one may down one, two may down two, and three may down three. So here we observe that the image set and domain set, image and domain both are identical and this type of permutations are usually known as identity permutation. This F2 is then another permutation which we define over the set X, this F2, which is 1 goes to 3, 1 goes to 3 and 2 goes to 2 and 3 goes to 1. This is the second permutation which we define over a set capital X which consists of three distinct elements. In a similar manner we also define F3, F4, F5 and F6. These are the total number of permutations which we define over a set X having a three element and we know that if the set contains a three elements then obviously the three factorial that is six number of permutations we can define over this set. Okay, now we come to the identity permutations. If a permutation i of degree n is such that the i image of every element is the same element, like i of x is equal to x for every element which belongs to your set x. This is example of identity permutation because if 1 may be on 1, 2 may be on 2, 3 may be on 3, here we observe that this f1 of x is again x. This present an identity permutation property because this is an identity permutation 1 may down 1, 2 may down 2, 3 may down 3 and up to n may down n. Similarly, we have two more uh, examples of identity permutation where the domain and range elements are identical. Like in i, we have b1, b2, bn as a domain element, the same element we observe in the range side also. So this type of permutation are known as identity permutation. Now we come to inverse permutation. Since a permutation is 1 1 1 2 may, which is known as a bijective function, because 1 1 1 2 may is usually known as bijective function, and hence it is inversible. So every permutation f on a set x, which is a finite set, let us consider a set x having a distinct and distinct elements. And suppose f is any permutation which is defined over a set x, then the F inverse means the inverse permutation of any given permutation we can easily obtain by just interchanging the rows like first row becomes second row and second row becomes first row. So by mutually interchanging both the rows we get the inverse permutation. If your F permutation is this then F inverse will be 
B1 goes to A1, B2 goes to A2, and up to Bn goes to An. Let us uh, determine a few inverse permutations of the given permutation. Like this is your permutation F. Now we calculate its F inverse. As we know that in order to find inverse permutation, we just simply interchange our rows. So the second row becomes first row. So 4, 1, 3, 5, 2. Instead of first row, we write the second row. And for second row, we write 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This is inverse permutation of F. Further, we can easily rearrange because we know that uh, in permutation, a permutation can be written in a several ways. Means if we interchange uh, any two columns, it does not affect the nature of permutation. So this F inverse can also be written as 1 made down 2, 2 made down 5, and 3 made down 3, while 5, 4 made goes to 1, and 5 goes to 4. This is inverse permutation for this given permutation F. Similarly, we can easily determine the inverse permutation for G also. Like G inverse will be, again, we interchange the row. Here, your set consists of six elements. So your domain set contains elements like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the range set elements contains 3, 1, 5, 6, 2, and 4. The inverse of G will be 3, 1, 5, 6, 2, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now further we rearrange the elements of uh, domain. Means 1 made down 2. 2 made down 5. 3 made down 1. 4 made down 6. And 5 made down 3. And 6 made down 4. This is further rearrangement of uh, columns of this G inverse permutation. So finally we have obtained G inverse for given permutation G, which is inverse of G. In a similar manner, we can easily determine uh, inverse permutation for H also. Here, our H form, H inverse will be 3, 5, 2, 4, 1. We just make a second row become first row and first row become second row. We just interchange the rows and this gives us H inverse. Further we rearrange the domain element 1 goes to 5, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1, 4 goes to 4 and 5 goes to 2. This is the desired H inverse means if this is permutation H then H inverse will be given by this permutation. Now we define product or a composition of two permutations. As we know that permutations are nothing, it's just a bijective function. So being a function, we can easily define product of function. Product of two composition of uh, permutations let f and g be two one 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 two mates on a set x, where x is given by a1, a2 up to n, where a x is a finite set consists of n distinct elements. Then f and g are permutations of degree n because the degree of permutation means number of elements in the finite set over which we define our permutation. And clearly G of F which is product of two permutations G and F and F of G which is again a product of F and G are one by one two mates. So hence F of G and G of F are permutations of same degree N. Thus the product of two permutations of degree N will be again another permutation of same degree N. And in short G of F and F of G are denoted by GF and FG respectively. Now we define how we make a FOG and GOF. Like suppose we have permutation F and G. Now we define FOG. FOG means the product of two permutations F and G. In order to find product of two permutations, we first rewrite our second permutation, which is 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, and 3 goes to 3, which is our permutation G. So we just rewrite our second permutation as such again. So this 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, and 3 goes to 3. We just rewrite this permutation again, and then we this F permutation can be written as in a, such a manner so that the second row of this 
permutation G must coincide with the first row of F. So, if you want to write F or G, then we F should be written in such a manner so that the second row of sec the second permutation G must coincide with the first row of first permutation F. So, and further we write the mating of two from here two mate on two, so two goes to two and. 1 goes to 3, so 1 goes to 3, and 3 goes to 1, so 3 goes to 1. And finally, we observe two rows are identical 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3. So finally, we cancel them 2, 1, 3, and 2, 1, 3, which is common to both the permutation. And finally, we get 1, 2, 3 as a domain element, and remaining 2, 3, 1, which is our uh, ring, ring set elements. So this is your f of g, which is product of both the permutation f and g. Suppose F and G are two permutations defined on a five symbols 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then find F or G. Now we calculate F or G where F is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 4, 1, 5, 3. F or G is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 1, 4, 5, 2. Now, now we determine the product of f and g, both are permutations of degree 5. First of all, we rewrite the same g permutation as such. So, this 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 5, and 5 goes to 2. So in order to determine product of two permutations, we just simply rewrite the second permutation again as such. And then we rewrite our this f in such a manner so that the second row of this permutation must coincide with the first row of first permutation. Means we rewrite the second row instead of first row of f. And then we write for maybe 3, 3 goes to 1, 1 goes to 2 and 4 goes to 5, 5 goes to 3, and 2 goes to 4, ok? And now we observe these two rows are identical, so we just cancel out them and finally we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as in domain elements and their respective images are 1, 2, 5, 3 and 4 and this is our desired FOG in product of both the permutation f and g is defined as f o g of 1 goes to 1, f o g of 2 goes to 2, and f o g of 3 goes to 5, f o g of 4 goes to 3, and f o g of 5 goes to 4. This is new permutation which is product of two permutation, but the degree of this f o g permutation is same as the degree of f and g because f and g are individually of 5 degree. At the same time, f g is also 5 degree permutation. If f and g are two permutations, define our a, a finite set which consists of six elements and here we have to find f o g which is product of two permutation and f square which is product of same permutation f twice time and also find the smallest power of f which equals identity means which power we put over f so that it gives us an identity permutation so first of all we find f g in a similar manner as we proceed above uh, f into g we simply write f permutation as such g permutation Again, in order to find their product, first we rewrite the second permutation as such. This g permutation we write as such again. And then the second row of second permutation coincides with the first row of first permutation. So we rewrite 6, 3, 4, 1, 5, 2 again. And the 6 goes to 4. 3 goes to 5. So 3 goes to 5. 4 goes to 6. 1 goes to 3, so 1 goes to 3, and 5 goes to 2, so 5 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 1, so that's why 2 goes to 1. And finally we observe these two rows are identical. 
So we just cancel out the identical rows and finally we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 which are domain element and their respective image elements are 4, 5, 6, 3, 2, 1. So this is product of F and G, two permutations. Now we determine F square, means we write the permutation F twice time as such. This is the same permutation in order to find F square, we put F into F and we rewrite the second one which is same F permutation as such and the second row we put instead of first row. So 3, 1, 5, 6, 2, 4 and in order to find these images we observe from F that 3 goes to 5 so that's why we write 3 goes to 5 and 1 goes to 3 that's why we write 1 goes to 3 and 5 goes to 2 so we write 5 goes to 2, 6 goes to 4, 2 goes to 1 and 4 goes to 6 and finally we cancel out the uh, similar rows, identical rows and we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as 5, 3, 2, 4, 1, 6. This is our f square. Now, now we find the power of f which gives us an identity permutation. So, repeatedly we multiply one more time with f on left hand side as well as on right hand side. So, we just multiply with f one more time. So, left hand side become f cube and on right hand side this is our f square we multiply with f. This is value of f square which we obtained previously and we multiply again with f. So again we proceed in a similar manner and find the product, product of two permutation and we get f cube is equal to this much. But here we observe that this is not an identity permutation. It means we multiply one more time this equation with f left hand side as well as on right hand side. So this f cube become f cube as soon as we multiply with f and on right hand side again this matrix, this permutation again multiply with f again in order to obtain f4 and these are the two permutations and finally when we product them we get this permutation and which is our desired identity permutation because 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 3, 4 goes to 4, 5 goes to 5 and 6 goes to 6 so this shows f, the 4 is the least positive power over f which produce identity permutation so this is the desired smallest power on F which gives us identity permutation. Now we dis describe the cyclic permutation. See cyclic permutation, the permutation which replaces an object cyclically is called cyclic permutation. Sometimes it is also known as circular permutation. A length of cycle, the number of distinct objects permuted by a cycle is known as the length of cycle. This is one of the examples of cycle where f is given by 2, 3, 5. This is cycle where 2 moved on 3, 3 moved on 5, again 5 moved on 2. That's why it constructs a cycle and this why it is known as cyclic permutation. So this cycle can also be written in this manner as a, as a permutation. 2 moved on 3, further 3 moved on 5 and 5 moved on 2 and this is the cycle of length 3. So it's a cyclic permutation with length 3 because it consists of 3 elements. Because the cycle permutes 3 elements, that's why it is known, known as permutation of length 3. The another example is suppose G, which consists of 4 elements 2, 3, 5, and 6. And this can also be written as 2 moved on 3, being a cycle 2 moved on 3, 3 moved on 5, 5 moved on 6. Again, 6 moved on 2. So, this cycle can also be written as a permutation 2 moved down 3, 3 moved down 5, 5 moved down 6 and 6 moved down 2 and this is cycle, uh, cyclic permutation of length 4 because it consists of 4 elements the, all the missing elements are uh, constants now symbol for cyclic permutation usually we denote the cyclic permutation by a small bracket contain elements like a1, a2, a3 up to an suppose your cycle consists of n distinct element and this cycle can also be written as a permutation in this manner a1 goes to a2 a2 goes to a3 a3 goes to a4 and so on so by the symbol a1, a2, a3, a4 which means that each member in the bracket is replaced by the first one. Thus the cyclic permutation 1, 4, 2, 6 can also be written as 1, 
goes to 4, 4 goes to 2, 2 goes to 6, 6 goes to 1. And the missing element like 3 and 5 are remains unchanged. Now the cycle 1, 4, 2, 6 is interpreted as 1 replaced by 4, 4 by 2, 2 by 6, 6 by 1. And similarly we write this permutation as a cycle. Because 1 made down 1 is a missing element because it remains unchanged. 2 made down 2, 3 made down 3. So our cycle starts with 4 because 4 made down 5. For the 5 made down 6 and 6 made down again 4. So 4, 5, 6. So this is again a cycle with length 3. Thus the cycle 4, 5, 6 is interpreted as 4 is replaced by 5, 5 by 6, 6 by 4 and 4 and by 5. Missing symbols are unchanged. So the length of cycle 4, 5, 6 is 3, whereas the degree of commutation is 6. Because in domain we have 6 elements and in cycle we have just 3 elements. Because 4 made down 5, 5 made down 6 and 6 made down 4. So this cycle can also be written in the permutation form and this permutation having a degree 6. While the length of the cycle is just 3 because in cycle we have just 3 elements. Now we go to a symmetric group of permutation. The set Sn of all permutations of degree n forms a finite non abelian group with respect to permutation multiplication as a composition. Obviously, because if we consider a set S3, for example, S3, which consists of six members F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, and F6. Suppose we consider a set, finite set X having a 3 element 1, 2, 3. And we describe a set S3, which is a symmetric set, which consists of all the permutations defined over the set X. Let us consider F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, and F6. Why 6 permutations are there? Because in our finite set, we have just 3 elements. And we know that 3 elements can be permuted in a Factorial three permutation, five factorial three permutations, or factorial three permutation way. So f1, f2, f3, f4, f5, and f6 permutations are there. Now we prove that this S3 constructed group is a non-abelian group with a multiplication of multiplication as a composition. Because obviously the set S3 is not equal to five. It's a non-empty set, and it consists of six elements. So clearly S3 is not equal to 5. Further, for non-abelian group, we require only four properties. S3 must be closed. S3 must possess an inverse element. S3 must contain an identity element. And any three elements we choose from S3 always possess an associative property. These four properties, which is a closure property, associativity, existence of identity, existence of inverse, these are the four essential properties for a group. And because it's a non-abelian group, as we know that commutation multiplication is not always commutative. That's why I construct a non-abelian group. So commutative property is not there as function multiplication, commutation multiplication is not commutative. It means if you determine a product of two permutation f and g, it is not necessarily equal to g into f. Means fg is not always gf. So this commutative property is not there. That's why it is not uh, non-abelian. And closure property is there because each member of S3 is a 1, 1, 1, 2 mapping being a permutation. And when, as we know that when we multiply two permutations, means two 1, 1, 1, 2 mapping or a two bijective function, the resultant function will be again a bijective function, which is again a 1, 1, 1, 2 function. So again, the product will be again belongs to S3. Means this S3 always has the closure property. The second property is associativity, and we know that every permutation is a 1, 1, 1, 2 main. And as we know that multiplication of function is always associative. So this S3 or any three arbitrary chosen member of S3 always possesses the associative property. The third, which is an identity, uh, existence of identity element, and which is always there because previously we discussed f1 is given by this type of maybe means one made down one, two made down two, and three man. And this f1 is your identity permutation. So S3 always possesses the identity permutation as an f1, and further we discussed the uh, inverse 
elements. And we know that inverse of bijective function is again a bijective function. So every member of S3 must possess the inverse in S3. So in this manner, all the four essential property of group possess by S3. Hence, this S3 is a finite non-abelian group with, with respect to permutation, multiplication as a composition. And the order of this group is uh, n factorial. Why n factorial? Because it consists of uh, in our case, it is three factorial because we discussed the example with three three symbols. If we if we consider a finite set consisting of n distinct element, then obviously the order of group will be n factorial. In, in our case, our order of our group S three is three factorial, which is six because it consists of six elements, and it is denoted by S n. So S n is a standard notation for a symmetric group of permutation described on a and distinct elements. Now, every cycle can be expressed as a permutation, which we already discussed. Suppose a cycle 1, 2, 3, 4 represents a permutation of degree 7 on the set X, which consists of 7 elements. So then this permutation will be represented as 1 goes to 2. Obviously, 1 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 3, and 3 goes to 4, and finally 4 goes to 1. The remaining 5, 6, and 7, they remain unchanged because in cycle we have just 4 elements. All the missing elements have this unchanged image. Similarly, the cycle 1, 4, 5, 6 represents a permutation of degree 7 on the 7 symbols, and the corresponding symbol for this permutation will be 1 goes to 4, 4 goes to 5, 5 goes to 6, and finally 6 goes to 1. So 1 goes to 4, 4 goes to 5, 5 goes to 6, and 6 goes to 1. And the remaining 2 made on 2, 3 made on 3, and 7 made on 7. All the missing elements are unchanged. Here we have remarked, a cycle remains unchanged by changing the position of its element, provided their cyclic order is not changed. Means this cycle 1, 2, 3 can also be written as 2, 3, 1 because here we maintain the order means this 1 goes behind 3 so is that cyclic order 2 made down 3, 3 made down 1 and 1 made down 2 the same image that we get here because 1 made down 2, 2 made down 3 and 3 made down 1 this cycle can also be written as this because 2 goes to behind 1 so 3 made down 1, 1 made down 2, and finally 2 made down 3 again. So all these three all these three cycles are same, which we can easily rewrite our cycle in this manner, provided the cycling order is not changed. Because if we change the order of cycle like 1, 2, 3, if we write 1, 2, 3 as 2, 1, 3, then the cycle will become changed. Because here the 2 made down 1, while here 1, 2 made down 3. So we cannot interchange any two elements in the cycle, but we can rewrite our cycle in, uh, we can change our uh, position of the element in a cyclic order, like 1 goes behind 3, 2 goes behind 1, and 3 goes behind 2 also. So, similarly we have another cycle of length 2, which is 1, 2, and this 1, 2 can also be written as 2, 1. So here we write 1 goes behind 2, so, and 1, 2, 3, 4, this is another cycle having a length 4 and this cycle can also be represented as 2, 3, 4, 1 because this 1 goes behind 4 further this 2, 2 goes behind 1 and 3 goes behind 2 so the order remains same so we change the position of element but the order remains same now we come to the disjoint cycle see two cycles are said to be disjoint if there are no element in common means no element is common between them like 1 and 2 this is one of the cycle having a length 2 another cycle is 5, 6 which again consists of 2 members and here we observe that no element common between 1 and 2 and 5 and 6 so these two cycles are disjoint cycles the next example is 1, 3, 6 and the other cycle is 9, 4, 2 both cycles having a length 3 and both are disjoint cycles because there is no element which is common in both. But the third example, 135, 
five, four, one are not disjoint cycle as they possess a common element like one and five. These two elements is common between these two cycles, so that's why they are not disjoint cycles. Now we come to a multiplication of cycles. How we multiply two cycles? Previously we discussed how we multiply two permutation, and we know that each cycle can be expressed as a permutation. So first, in order to multiply two cycles, first we represent our cycle into a uh, permutation form, and finally we proceed multiplication of permutation as we discussed earlier. So we multiply cycles by multiplying the permutation represented by them. So for example, suppose the cycle is two, three, four. And five, three, one, two. See, the first cycle is of length three, while the second cycle having a length four because it possesses the four elements. And both cycles are defined or represent the permutations of degree six. So on six symbols, we define one, two, three, four, five, six. So we rewrite our cycle in this manner: two goes to three, three goes to four, and four goes to two. Means we rewrite our cycle in a permutation form. The second cycle, which is uh, five three one one two, again we rewrite the cycle in a permutation form. Five goes to three, three goes to one, one goes to two, and two goes to five. Now all the missing entries, like here we have uh, missing entries like one, five, and six. These three entries are missing here, so they are unchanged. Means one goes to one, uh, two goes to three, three goes to four. Four goes to two. Five and six are missing, so five made on five and six made on six. Any missing element we rewrite as such. And in the second permutation again, uh, four and six are two elements which is missing in the cycle. So four made on four and six made on six. In order to multiply them, we just uh, rearrange the domain element in a systematic sequence like one, two, three, four, five because. We know that if we interchange two columns in the permutation, it remains unchanged. So, one made on two, two made on five, three made on one, four made on four, five made on three, and six made on six. And now we determine the product of these two permutations. These two permutations, uh, as we discussed earlier, the second row of second permutation must coincide with the first row of first permutation. And the image of this two. We observe from here two may two goes to three, five goes to five, and one goes to one, and four goes to two, and six goes to six. And finally, we cancel out the common rows, and finally we get one two three four five six as a domain element, and the image elements are three five one two four six. So this is product of both the cycle. Further, this permutation can also be written in a cycle form, means one goes to three. And three goes to one, so cycle is closed. One goes to three, and further three goes to one, so cycle closed. Now we choose the second element two, and this two made on five, so two goes to five. Further five goes to four, and four goes to two, so again cycle is closed. So one three is one of the cycle with length two. The other cycle is two goes to five, five goes to four, and four goes to two. That is cycle of length three. And then finally, we have six goes to six, which is an identity mapping. So it remains as such. So further, we rewrite this. Uh, we just uh, omit this identity permutation six, and finally we get one three two five four, uh, which can be written as. Since the cycle of length one, which is six, represents the identity permutation. So we have one three two four and two five. Means we just Break the final two five four is a cycle with the length three. So further we break it into a transposition, means two four and two five into two transpositions. Now we discuss inverse of a product of permutations. Suppose if we have three. Cycles f, g, and h are any three cycles. Then the inverse of their product f, g, h whole inverse is open as in a reverse order, not f inverse, g inverse, h inverse. We open f, g, h whole inverse in a reverse order as we uh, discussed previously. That h inverse, g inverse, and f inverse. 
So let us consider an example. Let's suppose we have three cycle one, two, four, four, five, six, and two, three. The product of these three cycle, inverse of product of these three cycle in a reverse manner, like two, three inverse and four, five, six inverse and one, two, four inverse. And we know that inverse of cycle means the we just rewrite the cycle in a reverse order. Means the inverse of two, three is three, two. Inverse of four, five, six is six, five, four. We just proceed in a reverse manner. And one, two, four inverse is four, two, one. Okay. Power of the cyclic permutations. Let P is any permutation one, two, three, four, five. We have cyclic permutation. Then P replaces every symbol to the next place, assuming that the symbol lie on the circumference of the circle. Next, we define that P square. See, if your P is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, then what will be P square? If we multiply a cycle P twice time, means P to the power 2, which gives us P into P. A P square means we define that P square replaces every symbol two places along the circumference. So, this 1 goes to 3, two places, 1, 2, so further 2 places 1 and 2, so 5, further 1 and 2, 2, from 2, 2 places 4, so this is P square, and how we obtain P square, just replacing symbols are two places, so in a similar manner we can easily find our P3 also by replacing every symbols three places like this is your P P square we obtain by just replacing our element two places means one two so after one we put three again we put two places so three to five and further five to two two places in this manner, in, in order to calculate PQ, we replace each symbol three places. Three places means one, two, and three. So one goes to five. Further, one, two, and three, four. So five goes to four. In a similar manner, four, four goes to three, and three goes to two. And this is P4 basically. Now. In a similar manner, we can easily determine our P5. And when we determine our P5, P5 means uh, this uh, every symbol replaces uh, four, five times. Five times replaces means suppose this is first element, so one, two, three, four, and five times. So again, the same element coming. So one made down one, two made down two, three made down three, four made down four, five made down four, and which gives us an identity permutation. So from here it is clear that if we choose a cycle having a length 5, then obviously the cycle to the power 5 always produces an identity permutation. And with the help of this conclusion, we can easily calculate any higher power of p also like p to the power 8. Suppose we want to calculate p to the power 8, then p to the power 8 can also be written as p to the power 5 into p to the power 3. As base are same, so we simply add the power 5 plus 3 gives us 8. Why we split p to the power 8 into P5, P3, because we know the value of P5, as P5 is always I, identity permutation. And when we multiply I with P3, again it will get the same, because when we multiply any element or any mapping with the identity mapping, it will get the same end. So IPQ is given as PQ, and the PQ is obviously 1, 4, 2, 5, 3. So this is the value of P8. In a similar manner, we can also easily calculate our P to the power 9, P to the power 20 also. And this p to the power 20 is equal to i because p to the power 20 can be written as p to the power 5, p to the power 5, p to the power 5, and p to the power 5, 4 times. So 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, 20. And we know that p to the power 5 is always identity permutation. So i into i into i into i gives us i. So that's why p to the power 20 is always i. Suppose we want to calculate p raised to the power 21. This p to the power 21 can be written as p to the power 20 into p to the power 1 and p to the power 20 is identity and i into p gives us p so this p to the power 21 is equivalent to the cycle p which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 
I will give the next definition that is uh, transposition. See, a cycle of length 2 is known as transposition. Any cycle having a length 2 is always known as transposition. And thus a transposition is a cycle of the form AI AJ, where AI and AJ both are uh, initial and final element of our transposition, in which the symbol AI AJ are interchanged. You can easily interchange because in cycle, the 2 3 cycle can also be written as 3 2. That's why any AI AJ can be written as AJ AI. So in transposition, we can easily interchange the element because 2 3 transposition represent the 2 made down 3, while the 3 2 represent 3 made down 2 and 2 made down 3. The similar confusion we get, so in transposition, we can easily interchange the elements. And the other symbol remains unchanged, like other members, like if we define a transposition 2 3 over a set having a 3 elements 1 2 3. The missing entry remains unchanged. The one made from one only. Here we have remarked every permutation can be resolved as a product of finite number of transpositions. And how we proceed this process consists of two steps. The very first, we split our permutation into a disjoint cycles and further each disjoint cycle broken up into a transposition. So in this manner we can easily represent every permutation as a product of transpositions. So the first step express the permutation as a product of disjoint cycle and the second step we express each cycle as a product of transposition. Like here we have permutation 1 made down 2, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 4 and 4 goes to 3. First we split this permutation into a disjoint cycle. So 1 goes to 2. So we just write 1 and 1 goes to 2. So we write 2. And 2 goes to again 1. So cycle close. Further we have next element 3. And because 3 goes to 4, 3 goes to 4 and 4 goes to 3. Again cycle close. So in this case we split our single permutation into two disjoint cycles and both the cycles are disjoint as well as having a length 2 that's why this is a this is one of the transposition and this is another transposition transposition so in this manner we split our permutation into a transposition form let us consider another example of uh, permutation like 1 goes to 2 2 goes to 3 3 goes to 1 so we construct a disjoint cycle from the permutation so first we write 1 1 and because 1 goes to 2, so we write 2. Further, 2 goes to 3, so we write 2 goes to 3. And finally, again, 3 goes to 1, so the cycle closes because 3 goes to 1, so the cycle closes. Now we consider the next element that is 4, and 4 goes to 5, so 4 goes to 5. Further, 5 goes to 4, so cycle closes. And finally, we have single element 6 built down 6. So here we split our permutation into a disjoint cycle which is of length 3, 1, 2, 3 and the second disjoint cycle having a length 2 so it is already transposition but this disjoint cycle further, further broken up into a transposition as we know that transpositions are just a cycle with length 2 so we bring this disjoint cycle into a transposition with 1 goes to 3 this is first and 1 goes to 2 this is the second transposition in this manner we break any cycle into a transposition first element with the last first we write the first element with the last and for, secondly this first element with the second last element so 1 3 1 2 but we cannot write 1 2 1 3 because permutation multiplication is not commutative so it must be in this particular format 1 3 1 2 so finally we get 1, 3, 1, 2 and 4, 5. These are the three transpositions uh, when we split or factorize this permutation. Okay, now we come to even and odd permutations. See, in order to uh, identify whether the given permutation is even permutation or odd permutation, first of all we uh, split or factorize our permutation into a disjoint cycle and each disjoint cycle further split into a transposition 
and then we count how many transpositions are there. The total number of transposition decides whether the given permutation is even permutation or odd permutation. So a permutation is said to be an even or odd according as it can be expressed as a product of even or odd number of transposition. Means in order to identify even permutation or odd permutation, first of all we uh, factorize our permutation into disjoint cycle and further cycles into transposition and finally we count how many transpositions are there. If the total number of transpositions are even, like 2, 4, 6, then we say even permutation. And if the total number of transpositions are odd, like 1, 3, 5, 7, then we say the given permutation is odd permutation. Let us uh, consider an example of even and odd permutation. Suppose we consider a finite set having the three elements 1, 2, 3. And, uh, we describe a permutation over the set, finite set X, which consists of three elements as 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. This is identity permutation, and identity permutation is always even permutation. No need to confuse. Identity permutation is always even permutation. Further, we consider another permutation F2. Suppose our permutation is F2 over the finite set X where 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 2, and 3 goes to 1. First of all, we factorize this uh, permutation into a disjoint cycle. So, 1 goes to 3, 1 goes to 3, and further 3 goes to 1, so cycle close. And 2 being an identity making it remains as such. And finally, we write 1, 3. A cycle with 1 length is always identity. And finally, we get F2 equal to this. And here, this permutation consists of single transposition. So that's why this permutation F2 is odd permutation. Now we consider another example F3. Suppose 1, 2, 3 goes to 3, 1, 2. Now we split first this uh, permutation into a different cycle. So 1 goes to 3. Further 3 goes to 2. And 2 goes to 1. Here we obtain a one cycle which is of length 3 and further this cycle can be factorized into transposition in a 1, 2 and 1, 3. So finally this F3 permutation split into two transposition. So in a two transposition this permutation is even permutation because we split this permutation into even number of transpositions. If number of transpositions are odd, then we say odd permutation. So these are the few examples of uh, permutations. This is even permutation, this is even, this is odd permutation, and this is even permutation, this is odd permutation.